and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, the other picture that's that's over there, uh, these are some pictures taken of a lighthouse in Portland, Maine, by my husband's cousin Howard. And uh, they're not exactly what we're going to draw because it kind of combined them and changed them up. And it's based on a photo that I found on the internet of the same um, lighthouse. Our drawing is, uh, but this one is not a royalty free, so we can't exactly use this one. But the drawing is is sort of based on a combination of these, and it looks like, um, uh, it, well, we'll get to that in a second. But anyhow. Um, I'm going to move this one that's big because we don't need it, but I wanted you to see how it's got kind of a pink sky. And then there's a, a body of land that there's a little bit of water behind it and water in front of it. Uh, and so that is what I wanted you to take note of there. And I am working on picking that and um, taking it out of our screen. There we go. Uh, the other picture I'm leaving up there because that is showing you kind of what we're looking at today as far as uh, there's a lighthouse. It's a really good picture of the lighthouse itself, and it shows you the general idea of the little houses that are there. It looks like sort of like this. So it's that same lighthouse and the little houses that are there. I just grouped them really good, and we're going to draw that real quick, and we're going to paint something that looks kind of like this. Um, we're going to talk about values. So uh, in order to get going quickly, let's Jackie, get a paper out. Christine, can I just interrupt for one minute? Yes. It's, it's okay, and let's do this project. But when I had sent the email out, I just, I guess, either you or I, we flip-flopped the dates. Um, March 5th, today, I thought we were doing dramatic skies. So. Uh. And then March 19th, um, this picture, but let's just, we're in the midst of this, let's go with it. So I'm, I'm sorry to the group um, if I confused you, but we'll do, we'll do dramatic skies in the, in the next class, March 19th. Sorry. Um, in the email that you sent me, this was Lighthouse was on March 5th. So I'm sorry. Okay. Um, don't, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're go, everybody. So, okay. Hopefully, this, hopefully this isn't going to, uh, cause too much trouble for everyone. Um, but we're just gonna quickly draw this lighthouse. I would switch gears if I could, but I don't have all the reference stuff and we won't finish on time if I switch to the other. Oh, I know. Right now, so so we're gonna do this lighthouse. Um, we'll still make the sky a little dramatic, <laughs> but, but this is, this is the one on values today. What I want you to do is get your pencils and we're gonna draw real quick, just this drawing. Here's what it will look like. Let me zoom in so you can see it. We're just drawing something uh, that looks like this. Very uh, skimpy little bit of lines on our paper. So get a pencil and what I want you to do is draw um, a line a little bit lower than the halfway mark um, just draw it, draw it straight across there and don't make it too dark. That is our um, the, the top of the mountains in the distance. Then you want to align a little bit lower than that, maybe three quarters of, of an inch, something like that. And I'm only telling you that to give you a general idea. It does not have to be exactly three quarters of an inch. So don't take time to measure. Just draw a line. Good enough like that. Okay, now um, let's see, I gotta pull out my cheat sheet wherever I put it so I can get this happening quick. Okay, um, now we're going to put on here some, um, some trees and, and they're just gonna kind of be a lumpy mass off to the side here. And that comes down to your second line and then just make a little bit of lumps there and then get it below your second line a little bit. And what we're gonna do is right here, we're gonna put in this lighthouse. So just draw kind of a, a box or a boxy shape right there. And it needs to come to just barely, on this side, just barely above your, um, your line for the top of the mountains. On the other side, it stops a little sooner and just make a little triangle shape that juts out like that. And then we're going to um, bring it up a little and bring this one up a little. And we're going to just make an angled line there and an angled line there. And 
then it's mostly straight across the top except for if you want you can put a little chimney in there just a little little bit of a chimney shape something like that and then um this this bumpy line across the bottom here needs to go right along the bottom edge of that house and then we're going to just bring it over a little bit more and then again another little boxy shape just draw a line up somewhere like that uh, just barely above this horizon line and then on the other side here uh, this has to be wide enough for a little house and the lighthouse so i'm going to draw this line right up above this actually is the right hand side of the lighthouse so i'm going to put that on up a little ways because i want my lighthouse a little taller than the light keeper's house and so on this side now we're going to jet that out just the least little bit i'm not sure you can see that let's see here yeah just jet that out just the least little bit and then make it a, an angled line uh, and then draw this back over in here and i've probably made my lighthouse a little too skinny oops dirty part of the eraser made my paper a mess um, okay this line goes straight up as tall as the other side of my lighthouse and comes right down here that's really ugly looking i don't know what happened with that eraser let's get a different one okay um now uh on this we want to have this this land mass kind of comes downhill a little goes out in front of the lighthouse a little bit and then starts really slanting downwards but don't slant it too far down because we need to leave room for a body of water right in front of here and, and this land mass is kind of big uh so then just uh i'm going to just make a little ending to it something like that and then i'm going to put this a little line back in here that's just going to give the general idea of um, this is grassy area up here and this is rocks down below so that'll be like the top edge of the rocks and this is where the water is bumping up against this side of this land mass so you can see we got water here and water going back around here now to put a top on the lighthouse is really simple just put a uh, a little rectangle on top of it like that oh i was just showing you some stuff and you couldn't even see it you guys have to holler at me when i'm drawing stuff and it's not in the frame because uh i'm focused on what i'm doing here and i forget to look up at the screen this is what i was just telling you i drew the bottom edge of the land mass and here's the water coming around like this uh, so this this would be the line that's the bottom edge of the rock mass and this is the top edge of the rocks and then there's grass in here so anyway now we're gonna uh, just put a little bit of a step or something right there on the front end of that lighthouse and up here we want to um, put let's see come in a little bit from these sides so it's not straight up just in a little bit go up a little and then put a slanted top on it something like that and that is all we really need to draw there but just so you'll understand we can put a line there this is where we're going with it it'll be something like that um got where i'm looking here that and that uh okay now using a hopefully clean eraser you can erase these lines out of the middle here our horizon and mountaintop lines where they're going right through your lighthouse and keeper's house get rid of those lines and we're not going to do a whole lot of drawing because we want to put this in with our paint brushes but just erase anything inside there and we'll quickly i'll show you where the roof lines and stuff go on this one we just put what did i do over here on this one we just put a little slanted line over in here and then bring it back over here and put a slanted line there and that gives us all the definition we need for that uh part of this and then over on this side we're gonna whoops this comes slanted line down right there and over and then in a little bit from there make this slant out and connect it up with that right there 
so we have that little roof on and then if you wanted to you could put this little um little dormer but i think i'll leave it off of this one just for time's sake today um okay so that's that's all the drawing we need to do for this so i'm going to put my pencils away and get them out of the way here if they'll go away there we go Put away that and now what we need let's see i'm going to just keep both of these up here because i may end up drawing on both of them let me go back to the one with the reference uh so any questions at this point we're, we're the drawing should be finished and we're ready to start painting there's none in the chat okay um so the first thing we will do after I introduce you to my great little palette cam over here, um, if I if I bump the thing, it gets out of the screen. So let me just put it right back in there. Uh, and it's new, so I'm shifting it around, trying to figure out what's what. But this, I did two things for you today. I cleaned my palette, <laughs> so um, so. You don't see a big messy palette here and you can um, I'll be showing you the what colors to get uh, as we as we go along. So that's that's a cool thing. Uh, and these reds are here, not really because we're going to use them, but just I wanted to show you with this like this, you can actually see the color difference. This is a Scarlet Lake, which is like a, a cadmium red or it's a red that tends more toward orange. This is alizarin crimson which is kind of like your candy apple red. It's just a really bright, pretty, cool red color. This is a pyroline maroon, which uh, is more like a Santa Claus red or a Christmas red. It's got a little tiny bit of brown in it, but you can actually see the difference in the colors there. And if I pull the palette down into the light better, you can see this is a phthalo blue or Prussian blue or a blue that has a little bit more of a yellow in, in it. And this is ultramarine blue. And you can actually see now on my palette that there's a difference between those colors. So I'm hoping that's going to help us. Now, uh, to do our pictures, I've got a whole bunch of samples. I'll just run through real quick here and show you what I've got. Um, this one is mostly done with, with the right colors. I mean, the, the, the water's blue, the grass is green, the trees are green, the rocks are rock color. Um, but I wanted to show you how you can get distance in your painting and make a really pretty good painting by using the correct values. So my mountain range back here is painted in a lighter value than all of these things up here. And that means these have more pigment in the paint. So um, this paint would be more watered down. It may still be the same color, but it's just more watered down. It's not that you've added white or you haven't darkened it by adding black. That's not what we're doing. You just add less water to get the darker color with your watercolor paint. And that is different than how it works with acrylics and oils. So you need to know that about watercolor and that will help you uh, make paintings that look cleaner and prettier. Because once you start introducing black into your paint colors in watercolor, it really grays them down. Your colors get kind of muddy and dark and they're not as transparent and, and pretty. Uh, so if you want pretty and colorful, don't add black. And if you want light, don't add white, add more water. So here is um, the regular color one. Now this is one that I did with unusual colors. Um, just to show you, it's still got the correct values and it looks right, it, it looks pretty even though it's not your standard colors. And then we can start getting really wild and crazy and putting some really crazy colors in here, but it still um, is, is a unique and pretty picture because the values are correct. Here's another one. Just to show you, you can go really wild on these colors. Now this one, I think this one's pretty, but um, the, the thing with this one is the values are not exactly correct on this one. Um, so it's, it's pretty, but it's not, it's not exactly correct. And to show you what I'm talking about, I took some um, black and white photocopies. This is, this is, uh, let me show you which one this is. This one 
looks like this in a black and white copy. And you can see the different values give distance and, and perspective to your painting. So it's another way to create good perspective just by getting the values correct. And you don't need to know all kind of drawing tricks, just know about value and you've got that good. Uh, this is a photocopy of this one. So this one looks like this in the black and white. And again, you see you've got lighter values back here and, and the, even the water is darker here than it is back here. Uh, and I've got some dark in the trees here. And then to the reason there's lightness in here is because there's light uh, reflecting off some of the rocks. So you've got dark values in there, but then there's light spots where the light is reflecting. So that is just um, our quick instruction on values. And that's what we're going to attempt. Here's another really obvious uh, so you've got all this dark value here and lightness up there and um, really strong, good values are another way to add drama. Adding this contrast of values in your painting helps you add that drama that we're all looking for and the pizzazz that we want in our painting. So um, let's get going on this. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remind you, you need paper towels and clean water. And... Um, I'm going to take a, a flat angle brush, which is my favorite. You can use whichever you like. I use synthetic brushes too, by the way, because I like the, the bristles to have some body to them rather than um, a natural bristle brush. Let's see if I've got one right here. This is a natural bristle brush, and the difference in it is when it's wet and I put it on the paper, it has no body and spring to spring back. It's just, it's really floppy, like a mop brush. Whereas my synthetic bristle one, the, the bristles kind of hold their shape better. And I prefer that. A lot of watercolorists will paint with the natural bristle. You got to do what's comfortable to you. But um, for today, if you want to do what I'm doing, I've got a synthetic bristle brush and it is a flat angle brush meaning it's got this angle to it. So I've got this point here and I can actually get some details and stuff in there with, um, with this brush. And I, so I don't have to keep changing uh, which brush is in my hand. Now I want you to put water on your sky, but don't paint on the lighthouse. Don't put water on the roof of the keeper's house. And for now, I'm not getting water in the trees and I'm not going down past the top of the mountains, just right down to it. And we're going to just get the paper all wet. And then I'm going to put in some, let's see, I think I want to do, I'm going to put a, some yellow in there. And this is a, a nice, pretty lemon yellow color that I've got there. And I'm just going to put some in and I'll put a little bit down close to the horizon, put it in between the buildings and I'm putting it on to wet paper so it can um, bounce around and, and, and do pretty things. And I'm just going to go like that and that's good enough. And then what I'm going to do is get some, well, I'm going to get all that yellow out of my brush. Because if I don't get the yellow out of my brush good, you can see there it's still a little bit in there. Um, but if I don't get the yellow out of the brush, I'll end up making orange when I just want to put some pink out here. So I've got some opera rose, but you could use permanent rose uh, or magenta. And if you don't have any of those colors, pick one of your reds and add a lot of water to it to lighten it. So I've got this pinky color here, and I think it's actually a little too pink. I'm going to put a little bit of this Scarlet Lake in there, see what that does. Okay, so then I'm going to just right into this wet area on my paper, just throw some pink on there. And I'm kind of making it in diagonal lines because that's sort of how the, the clouds would scoot across the sky, mostly diagonally, and that will help show motion uh, in, in the sky and that's that's a good thing so put a little bit of that across there like that and then i'm going to get and i left a big gap there white because maybe there's a cloud there or a lighter color i don't know but 
it's it's going to stay light colored for now then i'm going to get a little bit of blue if you've got a cerulean blue or uh, even just uh, french ultramarine add some water to it and lighten it down um, use whatever blue you like for sky and i'm just going to put a little bit of that blue right up there and put it right in there and remember this is on wet paper put a little bit on top of my uh, pink there and i think that's pretty good I, I think i like it a little bit darker up in the top so i'll just add more and you can see it's running all over the place because my paper is plenty wet let's put a little bit like that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to spritz a little water on it if you don't have a spray bottle like this uh, it's a good idea to get one when you're painting with watercolor uh, but for today you could uh, you could either sprinkle a little water on or you can just watch this and make note of it for next time or something but i'm going to just spray a little water right on here and what this is going to do it's going to help that paint move around more so i can tilt my paper back and forth and you can do as much or as little of this spraying this water on as you want and have this paint just kind of blend and muddle together even more than it already was and i see that it's kind of having a dry line right across there so i'm just going to add more water right over the top of that and that's just going to make that um, wet enough to to move so the paint moves around on the paper that way and i'm going to try not to tilt it too much this way i'm going to put it over my palette just so some of the excess can drip off there um, but the thing is, if you if you tilt it too much up this way, you'll get this kind of a movement. Uh, and we want right now to have more of the horizontal or even a diagonal movement of this uh, water in, in moving the pig, pigments around in our sky. And this, I'm just helping it move a little. Now it has gone across the front of my lighthouse and I didn't really want it to do that, but not to worry. I have a way to fix that. So if you've got paint running where you didn't really want it, don't worry, we can fix it. So that's a pretty nice looking sky. And as that dries, that's going to kind of keep shifting that paint around a little bit as it dries and uh, it will just end up with a really unique and beautiful sky. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of paper towel and just dry some of that paper i mean paint up out of the middle of my lighthouse where i wanted it to stay white it doesn't really matter so much about the top because that's going to get dark paint uh, over top of it and in watercolor you can paint dark over top of light but you cannot paint light over top of dark for instance you can't uh we, we don't use white, so we're not going to take a white paint and paint that lighthouse white. That's why we leave it not painted so that it is it appears white in our picture because there is no paint on that part. We're just seeing the clean white paper. Uh, okay, so now sky is pretty much done. And um, I'm thinking, let's see, I'm... If I had, if we had enough time, yeah, we might, we might do it. Uh, I'm going to just quickly paint this other sky too, just to show you and give you guys plenty of time for your sky needs to kind of dry a little bit before we do the next thing. So I'm just going to demonstrate another sky for you while that one dries. Um, if we paint the next part on too quickly, the with everything all wet the paints will run together and i don't really want my mountain even though they're in the distance and i want them a nice soft edge i don't want them running right up into the sky so i have to let that sky dry a little bit before i paint that part so i'm going to do a more normal sky in case that's your thing and you want to see how to do that i just put all this water all over the sky area now I'm going to take uh, some nice Florida color for a sky. I've got some cerulean here. I know this isn't Florida, but in case you want to paint a Florida sky, I've got a little bit of cerulean and I'm going to put it right there on my cobalt turquoise, which is my favorite Florida color. And I'm going to take all that paint 
and just put it in my paper like that. Get a little bit of cobalt, which is a slightly darker bit of blue. Put that near the top because the sky will be darker at the top. And then I'm going to rinse most of that paint out of my paintbrush and then just go back here and kind of spread the paint that's already on my paper. Just kind of spread that out and pull it down towards the trees and the horizon line there. And there is a nice pretty sky that's a more normal one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my my paint brush when it's clean and just has water on it and I'm just going to put some pick up some of that paint and put a little bit of low clouds right across there. And it's not uh, picking up all of the paint because everything's still wet and it's all running. Everywhere that it's wet, the pigment is going to try to run in there. So if you want um, more distinct clouds than that, what you could do is just use your paper towel and go straight on your paper and blot some of that up. And then you've got nice clouds where you've just blotted the color right up. So that's another way to make a sky there. And you can, again, you can tilt your paper a little and that will, gravity will help pull some of that pigment towards the top of your page and keep the, keep the top of your sky darker than the other part. So I'm going to set that one aside for the moment and pull this one back over. And hopefully this one is, um, dry enough we're going to move forward and and i'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush it's still a flat angled brush um, here you can see that good over here i think there flat angled brush uh, that one might be a half an inch or something i'm going to just put a little water right in here where my distant mountains are doesn't need to be a whole lot just put a little bit in there and this, it's okay if it gets down on this part because we're going to paint this darker. Anyway, I need to pick a color for my distant mountains. Now, if I'm painting this in normal colors, uh, I would pick a blue-green or a or a something with a, maybe a greenish with a little bit of a lavender in the top of it. Just, you know, a, di a distant color, a distant mountains are going to look maybe kind of blue-green. Uh, but you just don't want them to be dark. So um, to keep the value correct, we want this a very light value, which means it's going to be watered down. Uh, I'm going to just be a little silly and paint a uh, light purple because I just want to show you what it looks like when you put something in that's maybe not exactly the normal color that you expect, but the values are good. So I'm, I'm getting this on here, and you can see my sky was still a little bit wet so some of it is kind of creeping up in the sky there i'm going to put a little bit more color right down here at the bottom edge because i do want that to be just a smidgen darker and then i'll just put this light bit of color on those distant mountains touch some darker at the bottom and that'll just kind of bleed up into the top there because it's all wet all this extra color i put at the bottom is going to creep up in there i got way too much creeping going right along here that comes from not waiting quite long enough before i put it on there but if i don't like it i can fix it later just by going back in once it's the whole way dry i can go back in with a clean wet brush and kind of pick some of that color up that I don't like. I might could even blot a little of it right now, but it's not going to do a whole lot of good to do a lot of blotting at this point because the paper is still so wet that it's it's just going to run right back up there. Okay, so that's my distant mountains. Now I want to put in this water that's back on the other side of this land mass. And again, what I put here, if this is really wet, whatever I put here, they're going to run together. And if I don't want a whole lot of that happening, I need to wait till that is dry before I paint this. 
So what I can do is I can go over here and start painting this big bunch of trees. Now this we're going to skip, we're going to jump to the next value. This one's going to be uh, a stronger, darker value than this area is. And that means we use less water in our paint mix. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to just use this puddle of yellow that I have over here from when I did my sky. I'm going to put some blue. Um, I think I'll use ultramarine blue right into that and turn that into green. And I've got a nice dark green going. If I don't quite like the shade of it, the, the hue, which is, you know, the exact color of green, uh, I can adjust that either by adding a different yellow in there or a different blue. Or if you're unfamiliar with color mixing and you just want to fast forward, you can actually get some green. I've got a phthalo green and an emerald green on my palette that I do use occasionally to make color adjustments. So I just made that darker green. Now that looks like a fake green to me. Uh, you don't see it as well on the palette as I had hoped you would, but it's, it's almost too Kelly green and we don't really see that green in nature. So I'm going to take a little bit. I also have a sap green straight out of the tube in my palette. So I'm just going to add a little of that and make it go a little bit more towards olive green. It's not really olive green, but it leans more to that instead of the Kelly green, because I don't want um, an unnatural green here. But I'm going to start putting that in here, and I can see that my value is not quite dark enough, so I need to add more pigment. So I'm just going to get a bunch more blue and put that in there. Christine, while you mix a little bit, could we take a breath so everybody can catch up? Yes. Um, I, I need to take a drink of my water, too. So there you go. Everybody Breather is go good right now. Go for your bottle of wine. I mean, your bottle of water. <laughs> One or the other. It's water today. See, it's on the camera. <laughs> I'm wondering too if this if my palette cam is helping. I feel like it's bound to be helping, except for when it's my very, it's open. very good. Is yep. that a green have blue in it? Yes. It doesn't look like it on your. Uh, it doesn't really look like it there, does it? No, but you have some blue in that green. It's I've I've got um it started with a little puddle of my Aurelian yellow, which is like a lemon yellow color. Oh, um, and I, I into that puddle of yellow, I put in my ultramarine blue and then I didn't like it. So I put in <laughs> some phthalo green. Then it was too green or too fake green. It was like Kelly green, which is a beautiful green, but not for nature. Unless we're looking at the golf course, maybe. I don't know. Um, so that's what this is. And it's just grown from there. I'm adding more color to get it the a green that I like and also to get it a strong enough color because this is not a strong enough value right here. You can see when I when I run the brush through it like that, it, it gets way too light. So I'm adding much more pigment and trying not to add too much more water uh, because I don't want to uh, dilute it at all. I want it to be really strong. I'm going to just take a big chance here and add some yellow ochre into this and see what happens. Well, that's really awful. So I'm going to start over. Yellow ochre was not the right thing to add today. So that is going away. And Are I you painting this green on a dry? It's yes, the green dry. is going on dry. And in fact, where I started painting, I need to keep this edge uh, loose right here so that I don't get a really stark change right in there anywhere. So I'm just going to loosen that okay. edge so that that stays good. Okay, now um, 
I, instead of the lemon yellow, I'm going to go with this other uh, quinacridone gold. If you don't have that, but you do have uh, a darker yellow or a yellow that's not so lemony colored, uh, something like that would be a good, a better choice for mixing your green. Um, maybe if you've got gamboge or new gamboge, that's a good color for mixing uh, good greens. And into that, I'm going to put some indigo. I put way too much indigo, but the value's good. <laughs> see when I move that? There's a lot of pigment in here, so you really don't see a whole lot of uh, lightness happening. But I'm going to have to get a bunch of that out of my brush and add more yellow so I get it green. Oh, and I just remembered... Um, I learned this from Jackie uh, some time back. If you've got Payne's Gray in your palette, you can add uh, one of your yellows into your Payne's Gray, and that makes some really cool looking uh, greens. <gasps> Went in the wrong paint. Went back in that yellow ochre, and I don't want that. There, now as I'm smoothing this out, you can see it's a really deep olivey green. Maybe you can't see it there. It's a really deep olive green going on there. I like that, but I'm going to need something a little bit lighter as well. So playing around here with this stuff, I'm going to say let's take some more of this quinacridone and throw in some of my phthalo blue and see what that does. Oh, we're back with Kelly green there. But maybe mixing a little of those together. That's got something pretty. Yeah, I think I like that. So um, are we ready to go ahead? Is everyone caught up? I think you've probably given us plenty of time. Thank you. Okay. So then once you've got a green you like, and once you've got it a dark enough value, then you just start putting some over here and you don't have to get too fussy with the edges of it because it's distant trees. It may or may not, you know, it's not going to have a distinct form or shape. It may have some little parts sticking out or not. And then when I get down a little lower, I'm going to just pick up a little bit more blue and go straight from the blue on my palette right over into this green here. And that just darkens it up a little bit and we've got a shaded area or, or an area that's in shadow. Maybe that would be the better way to say it. And I'm just going to get some nice dark color right down here at this bottom edge of where these trees go to. And I'm getting a little bit pasty on my paper because I don't have quite enough water in there. If you find you're, you're getting um, textured strokes, that if your paint is a little pasty, add a little water because you don't want pasty watercolor paper. I mean watercolor on your paper, that's not pretty. So anyway, I'm going to bring that right on over here and start making this edge. And I want to keep this edge up close to the uh, lighthouse keeper's house. I'm going to keep that dark, really good and dark, because it would be in shadow uh, from, the, from the house itself. So keep that good and dark. And you can put some horizontal lines like this. That will help indicate shadows and bring that green right down somewhere uh, in the vicinity of your line that you made for the tops of your rocks. And I like to throw some different greens in, just put a little variety in it. So I, I, have, a, I have something looking more like there's, there's shadows or, or the lights hitting these, um, hitting this grassy area different ways and I just don't like it to be one nice big smooth blob of green. I, I don't like that uh, smoothness so much. Now I want to keep plenty of pigment in my mixture here so that the value stays darker than that right there. So this needs a bit more color through it there. 
And as long as the paper is still wet and I'm painting with wet, really good and wet paint, whatever I put on here is going to kind of start to spread. So I'm, I'm using the horizontal back and forth stroke, but it's the paper's so wet that it's all spreading out into uh, the, the whole paint area that I've got going there. And it's going to end up looking really pretty and kind of like grass texture just because I of the way I put it on there and ke keeping the paper wet while I'm adding it on there. Okay, now um, what I've got in my picture, if you look at the reference picture, you can see that there's there's grassy area and then it gets kind of uh, browner as it gets down to those rocks. And we're just gonna have to make up something on the end here. I'm gonna put um, this looking like there's a little path that comes back down this way to this water's edge. So it's gonna look kind of like there's a path there and we're gonna fill some rocks in and I think that'll look pretty just like that. And there's maybe a little bit of grassy area growing right at the water line, but that's good for the, um, for the grass. And I'm gonna just zoom in on that so you can see what I've got there. And I forgot I was picking weird colors. I put a normal color in there, oh well. If I'd thought of it, that Kelly Green would have been perfect for this because it's not really, I'm not meaning to do natural colors so much for this one but we're gonna go with it for now. So I'm getting all that green out of my paintbrush. And while I've zoomed in, you can see how this has, my purple for my distant mountains really crept up into the sky. So if I get all the paint, the green out of my brush and just have a little water on here, I can clean that up a little bit like that. Don't want to do too much of it because it'll lift all the paint from there. But while it's dry, you can do a little lifting. And then if you want, once that's dry, you can glaze on another little bit of yellow color right over top of that and kind of bring it back to the nice bright yellow right there at the um, at the top of the mountain. I, I guess that's sort of the horizon. So clean brush again. Oh, I see that too. I've got some, some of my mountain color got over here in my lighthouse. Let me zoom way in so you can see that. I want to clean that line up right there. So again, clean water, clean paintbrush, but not, not dripping wet. Um, I, I got most of the excess water out and then I'm just going to tickle that paint right back off there in that line and this is why I like to use a flat brush for this because I can get that nice straight line right back there lift that color right out and see now I have a nice pretty straight line again um, it doesn't matter well it, no it doesn't matter uh, that it came down into the little roof here because we're going to put darker color on the roof and that'll cover that up and um, then we're going to put shadows on this side. So I don't think I really need to do any more cleanup on my uh, painting at this point. That's all going to dry as is. And this is dry enough now that I can put the water in here. But before I do that, I want to, while this is, I really should have done it while this was a little bit more wet. I'm going to put, um, if your painting on your grass has dried, just get some clean water and lay it right on that edge there so that's a wet edge. Because what we want to do is put the rocks in here in a way that they kind of blend a little bit. Now for the rocks, I'm going to use some brown. I can take any of my reds that I've got going here and pull them together with this green that I've got. And immediately I've got some nice browns happening. See that? Oops, no you don't there. What I did was I took that red and that green and I pulled them together and I've got some brown going on. Um, and I can add more green or more blue or more red just to, to adjust that brown color how I want it. But for now I'm going to just put some of that brown right into here, dropping it right into that area that I just put water on to get it wet. 
And then I'm going to pick up some of this purple and just put some of that in there. And this, I can tell you, is not a dark enough value. So here, I'm going to zoom back in again so that you can see, you don't see the reference, but um, you, it'd be better for you to be looking at this right now anyhow, because this is not a dark enough value. Uh, this value is, is the same as that back there. It's got too much water in it. And it's too diluted. So I need to fix that by adding more pigment. I'm going to just start picking up some other colors on my palette and darkening my brown puddle up. Christine, is it wet under the brown before you go there? Yes, yes, it's wet there. So there's already a lot of water on the paper, so you need to not have so much water in your paint. Um, so I've just added a whole lot more pigment, and see when I put that on there, you can see immediately it's a whole lot darker. And I'm putting it on this wet paint area. And then I'm going to just get some purpley color and put it right straight on to my painting because I want really dark rocks down in here. And there are some rocks down below that little grassy area. And I'm just putting this right on here like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a really neat trick um, in just a second. That's probably enough paint on there. I'm going to add a bit of blue down in here just because the uh, blue will, will darken it without, uh, it, it'll add some extra color and that adds interest. And I just don't like there to be everything all one color. It's not as interesting to me. So I did that. Now I've got this messy looking bunch of stuff going on here and I'm going to grab what I've got is my little Jerry's VIP uh, card. But uh, you can use a credit card or uh, a piece of cardboard, anything that's got a little bit of stiffness to it and a straight edge. And I'm going to just go in here and uh, scrape on some places and make some rock shapes. And this kind of mixes those paint colors together and we get this nice uh, looking thing that looks like rocks. And if you change up the direction that you're scraping, that will... Um, really help enhance the the rocky factor going on here. Make some jagged or straight, um, some more stiff edged parts. And just, this is, this is the kind of thing that you just have to play with it to figure out how to make it happen like you want it to. It, it's a deal that it, it takes some practice, but it's fun and almost everybody's got some little piece of something like this that they can pick up and scrape with and have some nice rocks. And I'm gonna leave that area not scraped just so I have a, again, have some interest. I don't want everything exactly the same the whole way across there. So I've got some really dark color in there. Now I've scraped on some highlight type of areas uh, where, where light might be hitting the rocks. And um, one thing I will say about that, white paper is the same, um, it can it, it adds as much contrast as adding a really dark does. So it's okay that some areas of this, like this is white right here next to this really dark, but it's contrast and it, and it's interest and it's light reflecting back off these rocks. So it's not incorrect to have some of this lightness going on here in within our uh, dark value area. So, uh, that's the rocks done in the grass. And we're going to move into doing the water next as soon as I've given you a minute to, to get your rocks done. Because that does take a little bit of playing with it um, and messing with it to get it like you like it. Is it more helpful to have that close up? or to have this where you can see the reference, which has some rocks in it. I love the close-up. Okay, so that's one close-up. I think the close-up is actually better too. Okay, I can close-up. Yes, I do too. Okay. In fact, I might could even make it more close-up. Yeah, there we go. That's, it's got most of the picture in it.
I know there's lots and lots of dead air, but I think everyone's working, so I'm not sure it's helpful for me to keep talking. I think it's kind of nice when you take a minute or two break when you do your, when you drink your water. I think it helps everybody. Then they can kind of catch up and their paper can dry a little bit better. Good. I see one head nodding. I see a lot of hands <laughs> down. I see another head nodding too. I can barely see. So I do think that helps. Okay, good. I just did a couple of classes myself um, in the last two weeks. And I noticed that if they never take a break and they're painting and painting, I really find that I just want to put my paintbrush down and watch because if I look down at my paper to paint, then I miss whatever the next thing was they did. So, I, I agree and, and I agree. I think that's a good idea and I think everybody appreciates it because it gets going too fast and we can't keep up. Yeah, I find myself pressured to think, oh, we have to finish on time, we have to finish on time. Um, so, so that is my, um, you know, what's, what's going on in my mind. I don't want to uh, not finish, but then if I'm not giving you time to, to paint, then maybe that's why no one says when, when I'm drawing, when I'm drawing along right here and then I, I go off the page and I'm painting off the page and no one's saying anything because everyone's looking at their own paper, trying to paint and keep up. So. Well, that, Christine, and we can talk later. Actually, a couple of times if you've said that, I, I've been able to see just fine. So I'm not sure what the variation is because I've looked up twice and it's like, I can see what you're talking about. Hmm. Okay. But anyway, I Christine. Oh. Okay. Christine. Yes. Did you, was your paint dry when you used that credit card or not? No, you have to do that while, before the paint dries. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. But I don't do it as good as you. <laughs> hmm. It's okay, guys. None of us probably do it as good as she does. She's been doing this for a long, long, long time. It, this this really takes practice, and I have to tell you, um, when I was when I was doing this one right here in front of you, I was thinking, oh no, this isn't coming out nice. But now I put my credit card down and I took some drinks of water and we've been chatting a little bit and I look back at it and I see parts in it that I really like how they look. So uh, it, it's just a matter of perspective. Sometimes we are we're in, in there working and working and working and we're too close to it and we need to take these breaks and breathers. You know, when I paint normally, I, I never finish a painting in an hour and a half. I, uh, I can take three weeks to finish a painting because I paint on it a little while and then I set it down or I prop it up where I can, you know, uh, I'll, I'll leave the room and go do something. And then I come back and I'm walking past the door to my studio and I glance over in there and I see this painting where I've got it propped up uh, against something so I can see it from out in the hall. And I think, wow, who painted that? <laughs> because no, it, it just looks better later. Or I see because I step back and get perspective again. I had a good friend who was a teacher and he said, you never listen to the symphony that you went to here by sitting right in the middle of the orchestra. And I thought that was a great piece of advice. What he meant was, Put your painting up, walk away from it, and stand and look at it from a distance. So I think that's a great idea. Well, I know it helps me. Is everybody getting close enough so that Christine can move on? Kind of nod. Can I ask you one more question? All the way to the left, near the bottom, there's like a little rectangle. When did that happen? What is that? That's just part of where I was scraping with my credit card. Uh huh. Okay. I I'm, I can go back in and change it later if I don't like it. I can use a paintbrush and, and move some of that paint around, kind of change the edge or whatever. But I just find that I scrape it with the credit card and then leave it alone and come back later and do something. And I didn't scrape right here because I intentionally wanted to have a big dark area somewhere in this. I've got a dark area here in this one because I dropped some blue into the paper over here while it was wet. I've got some blue going on here and more purple here and more of a magenta darker brown here. I've just got a variety of stuff uh, showing through here 
and it, it adds so much interest and it looks really pretty. And what I would probably do is come back to this much later after I've had time to get to regain perspective on it and take a, a small brush and do a little cleanup or touch up or change a few things or flick some grasses into it in, in a couple places. Um, but this, it's, it's not bad just like this. It, it, it looks pretty. And once we get the water on there, that's going to help uh, show up what it is too. So um, to put the water on, it, it's good to use the largest brush that you can use, but I have some small areas back in here. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brush to get that back there. And I may switch to the larger flat angled brush when I get to this part right here. Um, not really sure, but most likely that's what I'll do. But the first thing, um, let me see zoom back out. The first thing is I'm going to need to mix up some blue that's the proper blue for the water. So um, for this water back here uh, and this being um, more of a, if you're painting it, well we're not talking about accurate colors so I'm going to just not go there. It's going to tell you, talk to you about the difference in color in Florida versus Maine or something like that. But I'm just going to pick some nice water color. So I'm going to take this um, puddle that I have left over from my second painting that I did over there and just scoot that up into that other blue and I think that's that's a pretty good light uh, value for the water back there but I'm gonna take that blue into this puddle too and just change the hue of it a little bit it's a little bit more of a blue a cool blue less less of a yellow in this blue if that makes sense if we we haven't really ever talked a lot about color temperature but that is a thing warm and cool colors and a blue a warm blue is a blue that tends toward yellow and a cool blue tends more maybe toward red but i've just got a nice little puddle of blue color going there and you can see i can run my brush through it and it's really um, watered down and light. It's a light value because we want to start way back there by those uh, distant mountains and just put your brush flat on your page like that and go side to side, left to right, and just put that water down right there at that edge. Is that no. paper wet, Christine? Nope. Nope. No. Okay, thank you. Just going to uh, run it right in there on the edge of that until I get it like I like it. And because my uh, purple color was a little messy and some of it came down into the water area, if I go back and forth like this, it, it just uh, gets me the edge that I want back there. Because I do want it a tad darker right at the edge where the uh, distant mountains hit the water because there might be a shadow of those mountains on the water. So I just added a bit more blue right back there at the edge. Then take this light color and just back and forth, put it in here. And I'm using the flat of the brush. I'm not painting with just the tips like that. I've got my, bl my brush actually flat on my paper like that. And I've got plenty of water in my brush, plenty, plenty of wet paint in my brush here. So I can just keep moving this back and forth. And, and moving it back and forth horizontally like this helps um, give the illusion that this is water that's laying flat back there. And I want to just keep doing that till I've got a nice covering of light blue that looks like water. Now when I get down in this area I want to add a bit more pigment into my paint because um, the water is going to get a little bit darker as it's coming towards us here. So I added more pigment and then I'm going to go back in here and add this here. Now when you get down this far it gets starting to be a little bit more important that you leave some 
uh, areas white. So this is where your brush may not be quite so full of paint. So you can almost like dry brush in here. And you want to tickle this edge a little bit and pull just a little bit of that brown down into your water to indicate that shadow of that landmass happening right here at the edge. And then it's important to push your brush right down on there and go like this. And you can see that it's skipping. That's, that's dry brushing. That's what that's called. It's not wet. It's dry brushing. Now while my brush is dry, I'm going to go back up in here and just spread this paint over just a little bit in a couple of places and make some indication of a little bit of distant waves or something, some movement in that water, just a little bit. And I can actually even pick up a little bit right here and bring that back to white a little bit right there. That will look pretty. And then I'm going to get even darker. I want much, much darker for this water that's right in front here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some ultramarine blue. And I think just for the fun of it, I'll throw in a little bit of phthalo blue. I've got a really um, mongrel color going on here with all these other mixes of blues in it. But what I'm doing there is I've got a much darker, uh, stronger value because it's closer to us. As things get farther away, they get a lighter value and closer they get a darker value. And that's one way to help put perspective in your painting. It's called atmospheric pers perspective. So I've got a really dark blue. And again, with my brush flat down on the page, see I'm, I'm mashing it all the way down like that. I'm gonna just move that puddle of paint left and right here, right up at the edge. And uh, again, maybe pull a little bit of the brown down in there, but also deposit a darker um, bunch of color right up at the shoreline. And I'm gonna leave that little tiny bit of white there because I like it. Maybe that water um, splashed over there or something. And then I'm gonna put some on, but leave some white spaces. So try to put dark color in here, but leave some white spaces where the water is moving around and you've got little bits of the wind might be whipping up little white caps or something. And then I'm going to get some blue straight out of my palette and just drop in a couple of dark places because that'll look pretty. And again, it creates that contrast that gives the interest and, and makes their picture pretty. But try to keep your brush strokes left and right horizontal here because you want to have it show that this water is mostly laying flat. You know, there's a little bit of ripples and maybe some wind whipped up parts, but for the most part, this water's laying flat. So we want it to uh, look like that. So keep your strokes left to right, horizontal. And then I'm rinsing the blue out of my brush because I'm going to move into a red to paint the rooftops on the lighthouse structures. So now I'm going to actually pick up an even smaller brush. That would be the difference in them. Not a whole lot, but there's a little bit of size difference in these two. So I've got a little bit smaller brush because I'm going to use that to do the details all around on this thing. And I need to keep, oops, um, I, I need to be able to do details. I see too, right in here, I missed a spot. That's water. So I'm just going to touch some 
blue right in there. Again, I want to get it darker right up at the base of the distant mountains and let a little bit lighter show for where it indicates that that's water. So now I uh, have a few decisions to make. I need to decide which red color or if I'm even going to use red on these roofs. And I think I will use um, red just because I ended up going with more normal colors aside from the distant mountains there. So I'm going to just pick um, my alizarin crimson, which is just a, the, the redder red, the less orangey colored red. Um, it's a cooler red color. The Scarlet Lake or the Cadmium Red would be a warm red. And this alizarin is a cool red. So I'm going to take some of that. And I don't need to wet the paper. I'm going to just start putting this on this roof here. And I'm going to make a nice straight line at the top edge. And then this nice angle that comes down here. And what I want to do then is figure where I want to maybe have a darker spot because I don't like the whole roof to just be a solid color. So I'm going to pick up some of this maroon color and just put a little bit extra color right on this corner here. So it's a bit darker there and a bit darker right along that edge. Then I'm going to use just the tip edges of my brush here and just touch that right onto that edge over there to, to give that other side some shape. And while that color's on my brush, I can go ahead and do this little roof on this little part that's right over here with the lighthouse. Oops, I've got a messy line going. And I'm going to take most of that paint off there so I can get a thinner line on this edge here. So there's a couple of little roofs on there. Now I need to go down farther into the bottom of this. Let me zoom way in so I can show you what I did there. There's a secondary roof that comes off of there. In the reference photo there was actually a, a dormer in there and I left the dormer off for this one. Um, but I am going to put this extra roof and what I want to do for that is have a little bit more water in my paintbrush so the, it's the same color but it's going to be a little bit lighter just to uh, show that there's a distinction there this is another roof coming off so I make that come right down to there and you can see the distinction between the two and straighten up that edge just a bit because I want that to show nice and sharp for the shadows when I put them on. Now to do the chimney, I want the lighter color on there. And then once I get that lighter color on there, I've got just this little teeny tiny little bit of something that sticks up there. So, well, that's a little bit too big, but anyway it's something. Now what I'm going to do is take some of uh, the really darker pigment with almost no water in it at all and I'm going to touch it on that left side of the chimney. It makes a little shadow and gives a little form to the chimney. It's very distant and we don't see a whole lot of definition but just putting that darker color a little bit on this side gives just enough definition to it and it just looks nice. Let's straighten up that edge right there. And then I think that's good for that and I'm going to rinse the red out of my brush.
red's hard to get out of my brush sometimes. But I think that's good enough. So now I'm down to the last little bit of details and where you're going to want to use a small the smallest brush you have for the for the little details here because if you're painting like me on a 9 by 12 these are little bitty touches of color and uh, if your brush is too large it'll come out too big so you can switch to a, one of your smaller brushes and what we're going to do is we're going to add in all of the detail here we're going to put the darks around the top of the lighthouse we're going to put some shading around on certain parts of these buildings to give shape to and form to the buildings and then we're going to put the windows in so we'll start with mixing a good dark color now in my palette over here i've got the remnants of my dark green that would be this right right here so I've got the remnants of this dark green, and I've got a little bit of uh, Windsor Violet dark purple right there. And I think if I mix those two together, I'll get a good dark to use for the top of the lighthouse. And the reason I would do this instead of getting black straight out of the tube, the black is going to be stark and almost like stand out like it's jumping off the page. It's just going to be too much different to paint with with uh, even using Payne's gray sometimes is just too dark. But if you'll use the colors that you've got in the whole rest of your painting and and find, you know, learn ways to mix those together to get good darks, it is more um, uh, continuity in your painting overall. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just pick up this uh, really dark green here and transfer it over into that purple puddle and um, it's not quite like I like it so I'm going to go ahead and get some more of the Windsor Violet and drop that in there and that's a nice dark it it's a very warm dark and I think I want to cool it down just a little bit so I am going to touch a little bit of my ultramarine blue which we've been using in the painting anyway. But I add that in there, and now I've just got a really beautiful dark color there. It's silky and pretty, and it has some life in it. Um, I wish you were just here seeing what's in my palette, uh, as good as I am, but I think the palette cam is helping you a little bit to see what I've got going on there. If I really scrub on it hard, you can maybe see the lightness through it. But anyway, it's, it's a, a nice, pretty silky color and I'm going to get most of it back off the brush and then just use the tip of what I've got here and I'm going to start putting in the definition on this lighthouse and I want you to keep the left hand side darker the right hand side lighter so for the moment I'm only painting in the left hand side of this then I'm going to get my brush wet and get most of the paint and water out of it and just spread that over a little bit and that's going to be perfect and it, it gives that form uh, and shape to the lighthouse to the roof there so now um the rest of the way this goes i need a little bit of a line down on that side and a line on that side and a kind of a wide thing in the center and then i'm going to paint this other rail here and we've got a dark thing in the middle. And then the base line goes across there. And I just put some uprights or some verticals in in a couple of places. And that is all the detail we need on the top of that lighthouse. Actually, I guess I'll put another really thin line right there because it looks like it would look better with that. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, rinse most of the color out of my brush. It's still got a little bit of color comes off the brush when I touch it to the paper towel here. So that's that shows you where it's at. And it's not drippy at all. And I'm going to just use that damp brush to kind of draw that color from the left side over to the right side of that little top. Uh, roof section there on my lighthouse and that is all the color that that needs I'll just touch a little bit right there it's got a, 
uh, really nice shape and color to it now. And with that little bit of color in my brush, we're going to use that for some uh, shading. And we'll just, uh, let's start by putting these two little windows right here. Just make a little rectangle down. I need a little bit more color than that. Little rectangle down and a little rectangle down. And that's two windows right there. Then we've got a different shaped window over here. And I'm going to do like I did the other thing, just kind of outline it. And then I'll go back with water on my brush and smear that around. And that'll make a good shape there. Then we've got, um, we've got a door on this side of, of this little structure. And a little bit of a window there that's just a square. Then you can put something over on this side. And I like to put two narrow rectangles right on top of each other so it kind of looks like you can see a bit of the window sash or something there the lights hitting it i just like the way that looks then we've got one long narrow window and i'll need more paint one long narrow window right up the top of the lighthouse right there now um we need some shadows and some shading oops we missed a couple of windows i want to get a little bit less dark color in my brush because these windows on this side are in the light side so I don't want them as as dark so I'm going to put a couple of rectangles right on here one right above the other and then to give them some shape I want to get most of the water out of my um, out of my brush I just touched it on there and it sucked most of the water out and I'm going to just pick up a little bit of color from my paint palette uh, but it's not wet at all and I'm going to just touch in a little bit of detail on the edges of this these couple of boxes and that gives a little bit of shape to those windows and then I'm going to put a line across the middle to indicate maybe a sash or something so I've got just a little bit of definition going on there can uh, touch up this one a little get that like I like it then I'm going to get my paintbrush wet touch it on this paper and then just like I said kind of spread that paint around a bit to fill that in then we need to, to let me show you this in my paint palette I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of touch it in there I just I just smashed it down just like that right in the middle of this wet paint puddle so you see about how much paint i've got picked up on my brush then i want to uh, there's a little puddle of water right there i'm going to just spread this in there and go like that and you see how that turns into a puddle of paint it's a nice light color it's a little too dark though for the shadows on here so i'm going to add a little i mean it's a little too like just plain gray so i'm going to pick up some of this purple right here and put that in it and see what happens that's getting better let me add pull a little bit of that blue in and that's getting just about perfect if you can see how that does when i spread that around in my paint palette so it's not a lot of uh, it's not a lot of wet paint and drippiness but it's very light uh, diluted color and with that on my brush I'm going to paint this whole side of this building with that just lightly put that color right over the top of everything I had going on there and that darkens that side of the building so let me zoom back in so you can see that see I, I just darkened that side of the building now we've got a little line let me show you this right here so you can see we've got a line coming down right there where this building wall shows where this one cuts in a little bit so i'm just going to make a skinny line right straight down there and that puts that wall in shadow so we're creating all this form and shape to this building and we're painting perspective without it being painful at all really um, now i want to take that same paint and put a little bit right along the underneath side of that red line to just paint the the shadow of the eaves of the roof there and it's only on that side we don't see the shadow from this other side here that's facing towards us only that one over there 
Then we're going to do the same thing on this structure over here. We've got a darker side over here. It's in shadow. And I want you to do a little bit like that and lighten that up by adding even more water there and make that part up at the top just a little bit lighter color. And in fact, you can draw a little bit of the red down into it. It's like reflected color, reflected light, uh, draws in the color from the objects surrounding it. And that just adds another dimension and looks pretty. Then we've got a little bit of shadow underneath that eave there uh, coming down onto the side of the lighthouse. And ditto for up here underneath this uh, edge. We want to pull something down there like that, but then we make it go round to indicate that this is a round building. So kind of diagonal line over there like that. And then you can put a little bit of shading on the top of that little stoop. And I think that's pretty good. I think we've got just about everything on there that needs to go on. I'm going to uh, clean all that dark out of this brush and pick up just a little bit of yellow again, just the, um, the light yellow and put it right up in there because it just needed something. It, was, it didn't have enough color. Now what I've got going on here, I've got a little smudge there that I don't really like. Some people would say, oh, that's fine. It's a, it's a cloud in the sky. Well, I don't like it. So I'm going to take paper towel that I get a little bit of water on. It's just barely damp. And I'm going to just lightly rub on that to smooth that out a little bit. And now it's perfect. And then if I want, um, I can do maybe a little bit of that along this edge here where my mountains crept up into my sky more than I wanted it to. So just get a little bit of dampness on my paper towel and just kind of lightly rub that out. And once I've done with that, I can actually take my brush here, use the light bigger one, and just put clear water right along the top edge of there, right on top of that dry paint. Just paint some clear water right on there. Then I will take and get some yellow again, plain yellow, and just drop some yellow right over top of where I think that the purple crept up into it too much. And because we wet that paper there, I can do this and, and draw this right up and just have it blend, feather it right out into my existing sky, and it looks really pretty with no uh, hard edge there. So that is my finished painting. Beautiful, Christine. Really beautiful. Thank you. So do we have time for a few people to show theirs? Yes. Oh, we need to, okay. I'm going to unpin mine. So whoever whoever wants to show theirs, you just have to speak up. And if you talk, um, when we're on speaker view, whoever's talking shows up for everybody. So um, Valerie, I see I'm Valerie's on. raising her hand. Yeah. Wait, wait, Valerie, I couldn't. I'm, I'm trying to unmute you. Wait a minute. So I have to say I'm lousy on the rocks. But I certainly remember 101 Sandy's watercolors. Ooh. Oh, oh, beautiful! Well, now the rest of us can't talk because if we talk, then Valerie goes away. So Valerie, you have to keep talking. And okay, if so everybody would mute themselves they, first, and then let that one person talk, that would work. So am I in? Yes. Okay. So basically, my recollection, everything came back. What I learned with watercolor. Um, this is it. Beautiful. Really beautiful. It's really good. So the next person. <laughs> Everyone hold up yours. Oh, Bobby. Oh, no, it's not Bobby. It's M-N. I don't know who it is because there's no, I can't see. That's Marianne, I think. Oh, beautiful. I wasn't unmuted, so that's why you didn't see me to begin with. But I went more purpley and turquoisey because that's with the water. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice, Marianne. I like it. Thank you. Very pretty. Okay, everybody hold yours up so we can everybody can see. Very nice. 
Oh, wow. Great. Diane, pretty. Bobby, yours is gorgeous. Anne's looks good. Barbara, we're in the dark a little bit. Let me let me spotlight you, Barbara, and so we can, there we go. I spotlighted really? it so there's more light. You put birds in your sky. Cute. <laughs> Love it, everybody. This was wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, thank Amy you very much. Yours. Everybody hold them up one more time and I'm going to do a screenshot. Okay, we got everybody? Except for my arm is in the way of mine there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great job, everybody. Really beautiful work. The importance of a good brush. I chickened out at the end and I had to go to my colored pencils. Oh, <laughs> Well, because my my little brush wouldn't 